Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds, and in this cool video, we're going to be talking Randy Oliver's Oxalic Acid Extended Release Sponges, and we're going to be showing you how they're made and some of the things to watch out for and a lot of other tips. So if you haven't heard of Randy Oliver, he's one of the most famous beekeepers in the U.S. and around the world, and I'm going to leave a link down below pinned in the description and in the comment section where you can see his website, scientificbeekeeping.com. He has all kinds of information from oxalic acid research to nutrition research, lots and lots of tests. Now, also, I'm going to be leaving down below links to all of the things that we use to make it. In this video, we're going to show you how we make everything, things to watch out for, and safety, all that kind of stuff. Now, before we go any further, I have to say that this product is not legal to use in most places. Countries like New Zealand, it is legal to do this. You can make it for yourself. Some of the states in the United States, you can do that. And there's other states in the process of getting that done. Now, I personally have an EPA exemption for the state of Tennessee. So I can use these on colonies that are not going to be used for honey production. So I have it in my test yard only and we will not be pulling any honey off of these colonies and this is something that can be filed for but you can't be using these unless you have EPA exemption. Now we're ready to start making the oxalic acid extended release sponges but there's several things that we need to do to make sure that we're safe and Laurel I have a number one rule for safety what is it? Okay an idiot the other one. <laughs> okay, so let's not ask Laurel any more questions for the day. Let's get to the oxalic acid. But we do need to be careful because even though oxalic acid isn't a really, really harsh acid like some acids out there, it can still cause skin irritation and I don't really want to get it on my skin or anything like that. So I've got these nitro gloves on. I also have half a gallon of water over here with six tablespoons of baking soda and that is used to neutralize anything so if I get it on myself or or I want to neutralize any acid on this spoon I can just place it in there and the the oxalic acid is neutralized by the alkaline uh, nature of the baking soda so we need a scale we need to be exact I know that there's going to be people ask me about having a cup measurements and tablespoon measurements but this kind of stuff needs to be exact it's important and so this scale right here um, they're really not that expensive um, I'll leave the link below I've been using this for all kinds of bee stuff for a long time but we have 500 grams of oxalic acid to hydrate it's the same type of oxalic acid that people use in vaporizers and we're gonna have 500 grams of vegetable glycerin so I'm gonna put this onto the scale and if you'll come up here you will see that Right now it's zeroed out and that's set to grams. And then we are going to drop this on down and it weighs one kilogram exactly, interesting. So we're going to hit this button right here and zero it out so it won't account for any weight on that glass measuring cup. And we are going to pour 500 grams into here. Chug a lug, chug a lug. So now that we have 500 grams of vegetable glycerin, we are going to pour that into this stainless steel container. And we are going to want to make sure all of that gets on out of here. Now that we have our 500 grams of vegetable glycerin into the stainless steel pot, we are going to carefully scoop in the oxalic acid. Now you may be wondering, that is a lot of oxalic acid to vegetable glycerin, but it's supposed to be super saturated because once it sets up, it is going to really crystallize and, and harden and make it to, to where it's not going to drip out of the sponges. And it's just going to be a, the perfect texture for long-term uh, low-level dispersal through the colony. Be very careful and try not to splash this all over the place. Oh. 
All right, so we have the temperature currently a little over 120 degrees Fahrenheit. We don't want it to get above 170. If you'll notice, this is starting to get a lot more clear. And it needs to be all the way clear, so we are going to keep stirring it a little bit more. And I'm probably going to get it to about 160 degrees, and then we are going to be finished with the mixture. But we're going to keep stirring. There's a few little bits of oxalic acid that have not dissolved yet. And this is quite super saturated. And while this is clearing up the rest of the way, we are going to begin another step in the process of preparation to make these oxalic acid impregnated sponges. The oxalic acid and glycerin mixture is ready to pour. Real quick, it only took about seven to eight minutes to warm up. Just a little bit over medium on our stove. Just keep an eye on it because it warms up pretty quickly. I would not recommend doing it anywhere close to the high setting just because you, you don't want it to get over that 170 degree Fahrenheit mark. And once it warms up, it really starts rapidly going. Now, if you'll look down into here, you will see just how clear it is. And so this is how it's supposed to look. It's just extremely clear. And I think I dropped a little bit of a debris, a bit of debris off of this thermometer. And we are going to carefully bring that over here. And we are going to neutralize that in this baking soda solution. See that reaction right there? That was pretty cool. Now when we're pouring the oxalic acid glycerin mixture, we want to make sure that we're not splashing. This would be a great time to put on some safety goggles just to be safe. And after it has been in for about three to five minutes, we're going to flip everything over and ensure everything's evenly saturated. Now that it's 24 hours after we've put the oxalic acid and vegetable glycerin mixture into the sponges, they are ready to put onto the hives. I think it's best to use them within a month or two afterwards and keep them in something like a Ziploc that is sealed so you don't have a lot of air getting to them and all that kind of stuff. So we're into this hive right here. It is February. Oh goodness, I just went right out of my mind. It's February 16th. Wow, they have been eating that like crazy. Look at all those good looking bees right there. Nice looking bees. So typically in a double deep hive, we put them in between both of them. Right now, a lot of the brood is up in the top of this box. We will be rotating this one fairly soon. I can't believe I'm saying that in February, but that's just the case. But in a single, which would just be one deep box, we just put the two sponges right onto the top. So we are going to drop down below. What a nice bit of weight there. And there's a little bit of bees. There's not quite as many, but they are traveling up through here. And that's what we want is to get the tracking onto these sponges. And I would say again, here in the next two weeks, I'm going to be rotating this top box out and dropping it down to the bottom place and putting this one on top so that the queen can move up into that and lay. And we will probably have to rotate the sponges again for that. Hmm. You know what? In this case, I'm gonna put them up top. So, because I'm going, I know I'm gonna be rotating, I'm gonna go ahead and put them on top so I won't have to transfer them. And there's more activity up towards the top anyway. So, yeah, there's, there's no brood down in here, so I'm gonna face this upwards towards all of this nice brood that we have. And I know this is about the oxalic acid pads, but can we please take a moment and look at the bees? Well, of course we can. It's a wonderful February day, and why not? Oh my. <laughs> oh yeah, these bees look good. Look at that gorgeous maple pollen up here towards the top. And that's wonderful. 
and there's just wonderful baskets all over the place and just wonderful frames of brood and they're eating that pollen patty and with that good pollen they're just going to town there's a lot of weight in this top box as well and bees require a ton of energy to maintain that warm brood nest to keep that brood going forward and expand in these cool months so what we're going to do is take the sponges now smoke the bees out of the way and we are going to place them like so and now as the bees track this onto themselves it's going to get a few varroa mites and let them know how much we appreciate them. The nice thing is this is very natural and it is very safe for our bees. There's a lot more research and information to still learn about controlling varroa. Unfortunately in beekeeping because we're a small market we don't get a lot of attention from a lot of the big agricultural groups and a lot of the funding and lobbying. So. We really need to be careful. We need to be doing things safe for ourselves and safe for the bees, but we also need to be learning all the time and trying to support one another. And I really appreciate Randy Oliver's work as he tries to solve some of the hardest issues in beekeeping. I'm very thankful to be able to have learned several things from his website, so definitely check that out. Again, I have EPA exemption to be able to use this in Tennessee. Currently, it's not legal here. It is legal in other states. I'm anxious to share more information with you about what we learn from this as we go along. I don't consider this a treatment that is going to save everything under the sun. There's no such thing as a silver bullet. However, this could be something that is very helpful and that's what we're looking for. Thanks for watching this video. Leave your comments below please about what you think about this or other things and I look forward to seeing those. The recipe, information, and more will be down pinned in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.